She was born in the outskirts of Seoul to an American GI and a young Korean woman. He was born in Alsace, France, land of pork and cabbage. She was put up for adoption at three and then lovingly raised in Virginia by her new family. He was 16 when he began his apprenticeship. She found her birth mother when she was 19. He came to America and became one of the world's greatest chefs. They fell in love and married over a decade ago. Now, Jean-Georges and Marja return to her birthplace to chronicle the tastes and traditions of Korea. These are the Kimchi Chronicles. Korean food isn't shy. <laughs> it's all about loud, punchy flavors. Look at that. Is that not perfection in a spoon? <laughs> about ingredients that take time to pickle and ferment in giant earthenware pots. About soups that come together quickly over a rolling boil. Nice. Delicious. Wow. <laughs> and barbecue cooked over an open fire built right into the dinner table. It's about the huge variety of side dishes and about communal eating, where one dish in the middle serves all. Mmm, amazing. It's tied to a culture that's both rooted in tradition and devoted to innovation. It's healthy, it's satisfying. This is what chefs do. It's distinctive and it's a whole bunch of fun. <laughs> Kimchi Chronicles is part travelogue, part food fantasy and part documentary of self-discovery. It celebrates a cuisine and a culture committed to the age-old practice of taking something ordinary and making it extraordinary. Kimchi Chronicles will transport you halfway around the world to a place that is still very much uncharted terrain for most Westerners. But that's all about to change. Kimchi, barbecued beef bulgogi and bibimbap are coming soon to a neighbourhood near you. everybody, I'm Hugh Jackman and welcome to the Kimchi Chronicles. I'm so thrilled to have you here. Well, actually what we're going to do every week is take you to Korea, where we're going to find out what's really authentic about Korean cuisine. Then we're going to come back here into my kitchen and we're going to try it out and really see if we can do it back here. So I have some very special guests. The first, of course, is none other than my wife, Deborah Lee. Hello, darling. How are you, baby? How Except are you? I have to tell you something. Yeah. Well, it's not your show. The what? It's not your show. It's Marja and Jean Georges. This is their show. And it's their kitchen. We're just visiting. I We're think guests. They do want me? Hi, Marja. Oh, hey. Hello. Hello. Hi. My kitchen. Are you kitchen? <laughs> I read the script a whole oh different God. way. I'm sorry. Thank I'm sorry. you for joining us. You know we're doing the Oscars yeah. here. I'm sorry. I want to kiss this man. This is Marja and Jean-Georges uh, von Richten. We actually are neighbours, good friends, and uh, we live one floor above you guys. Exactly. Which is torture because we get the aromas the wafting up smells. through there. Yes. And of course we have a, a world famous chef here, Jean-Georges, and not so much world famous, but just as good right well, here. Am I right? Well, soon to be, yes. Soon to be This is my new competition. Yeah. I have to watch on. I'll tell you. <laughs> Well, so why don't you guys take over? I've pretty much taken everybody through most of the history of Korea <laughs> and the cuisine, but why don't you just top it off? Why don't we start with a little bit of choju? That'll loosen up everything. No. Okay. Lips. This is a traditional drink made out of rice. Yeah. You see the glass as it comes in, it's dangerous. So. <laughs> and and Korean moonshine. Kombe. 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 It's a typical actor. All right, let's get on with this. That's wrong. That Next is strong. Time. It goes down very light, but then it get, you get the aftertaste okay. after. Let me take this away. Mm -hmm. This is really good, actually. Mm. Like this. We've got work to do, so watch it. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's down <laughs> the hatch. Okay, right. what are we making? We're here. We're very serious now. Okay. This is the <laughs> basics of Korean cuisine. That's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. This is all called panchan. And uh, you get different panchans with every meal. But in every meal, for sure, you're going to get rice and kimchi. 
There is not a meal served that does not have kimchi. Kimchi for breakfast, kimchi for lunch, kimchi for dinner. This funky fermented cabbage is the cornerstone of Korean cuisine. Kimchi is, plain and simple, a Korean pickle. There are hundreds of varieties of kimchi. Simple ones made of green onions or crispy white radishes, and more complex ones with everything but the kitchen sink. The most recognizable version is made with Napa cabbage. First, it's carefully washed and then massaged with salt. The salt softens the cabbage and draws out its liquid, starting the pickling process. Then a paste made of heavy hitting Korean flavors, including sliced mu or daikon, garlic, ginger, red pepper powder, onion juice, salted shrimp, scallions, chives and fish sauce all get rubbed over and between each of the cabbage leaves. The cabbage is left to sit for as little as a few days and as long as a few years. Like aged wine or cheese, the longer it sits, the more complex and assertive its flavors get. Combined with its addictive flavor, it's becoming a food people are enjoying around the entire world. It balances and cuts rich food and adds an extra hit of acid and salt everywhere it goes. You know, when Maja and I moved in the first night, yeah. I came home, yeah. grabbed some water, I opened the fridge, I closed it up, I said, somebody died in my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea who came in the house. I don't know if she was coming with kimchi, it's luggage. Yeah, really, my baggage. Yes. Um, but now, yeah, my kimchi have it's arrived. Good. Yeah. But yeah, now, you're used to? No, I love it. Oh, yeah, can, thank you. Can, uh, so you have these with every meal? Just about. Mac and Even when he cooks his, his French yeah. things and... Uh, really? You have that on the side? So you have that with mac and cheese? Absolutely. Does that annoy you like someone having ketchup on your... Uh... It uh, used to, but he's over it. I like it, I like it <laughs> too now. To it. <laughs> because she's always right. Got it. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Comes with the territory. Can't exactly. You? So I'm going to give you guys chopsticks. Yes. Now, these are metal chopsticks. They're typically used uh, in Korean homes. You guys just want to try a little piece. It's hot. It's spicy here, so mm. be careful. You did this uh, a couple of weeks ago? Or? I did. About two weeks ago. Don't say this that was made two weeks ago. Yeah. So you're giving us old kimchi. <laughs> this is you fairly new kimchi. Not, but we try kimchi was like four years old in Korea. You eat four year old kimchi? Yeah. It was pretty. Wow. Wow. It gets milder as, a, as you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Pretty strong. That's not that bad. Not that spicy? No. Hey, is that old? I'm a bit of a wuss when it comes to spice. It's not that old. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's pretty new and as far as okay. kimchi goes. Okay. But this one is a little sour, so after two weeks it gets a little sour. I have to eat it sour. A lot of people eat it when it's just made and, and fresh, but it's just your just personal taste preference. Your palate. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So these are some of the panchans here. This is uh, bean sprouts, a little spinach. These are small Fish. baby anchovies. Oh, oh. they're great! Really? They are great. Like Close your eyes and try it. Anchovies. Wow. But it doesn't taste strong like a regular no, it anchovy. Doesn't. No, it's good. And it's got a lot of calcium. S sweet, normally, no, no, no. Sugar as well. It's like, like fish it. jerky. Yeah. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> but what do they do to it? Is it dry? It's dried, and then um, you just season it Some a sugar, bit in sugar. a pan. A tiny bit of sugar in there, a little right. sesame oil. And this is uh, a Korean radish, and it's sliced thinly, uh, salted a little bit, and then with a little red pepper. Okay. This is called mu. 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 I like that. Yeah, that's mu. easy to do. <laughs> I'll always remember that now. <laughs> okay. Pass the mu. Pass the mu. Um, and these are just little fried cakes. This has a little mm. bit of fish in there and scallions. Mm. It's an egg batter. This is, has kimchi in it. So when you eat, this, this is on the be table before meal. you have a main dish. So you'd just have this? Actually, you eat it with a main dish. Oh, you eat it with Yeah, it. Koreans okay. don't really have courses unless you get into royal cuisine, and then you get into the big oh, so courses. It's just... And you eat it along with whatever your main with dish is. With your barbecue, right? with oh, your right. soups, with your everything. Yeah. So <clears throat> we've explained kimchi and panchan. And that's at every meal, but another dish that's at every meal is rice. And I'm going to do a dish for you today that's uh, very popular. I think it's translated well into Western culture. It's called bibimbap. It's that's a national a dish. dish. Oh, it's oh. a national dish. I mean, okay, so you take a little bit. Sounds like it should be a pop song. Bibimbap. <laughs> 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 All right, so you just do a little bit of each of these different things. This is beef. It's marinated and chopped up finely. And this is a bit of bean sprouts that have been blanched. And, you know, this dish is a good way to use whatever is left over in your fridge. Right. And in Korean households, there's always I love that there. Me too. This is a bit of spinach. It's very easy. And that's great. I was just reading that 
35% of the food that Americans buy is thrown away. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, but we don't really have a bib and bat, really. No. You do it. No. You know? So put a little bit of sesame oil. Is it mainly sesame oil that's used? Yes. Okay. Yes, it gives you that distinct taste. And this is cochujang paste, okay. and it's, yes, it's got some sesame oil and sesame seed in here. Okay. Easy to And I know, you put it, <laughs> <laughs> and you put it on there according to taste. So you can make it spicier or less spicy. So you just mix this all up. This is like a perfect lunchtime food. I make it for John George a lot. It's like a vegetable rice salad. Yeah, and you get everything. It's like exactly. <clears throat> Hugh, I'm sorry, right. but I'm going to need a little more. Um, don't oh. worry. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, don't worry. I'll on the wild side. All right. <laughs> You're ready. spicy enough. <laughs> <laughs> and you can put a chopped egg on here. You can do so many variations. You could do chicken. You can mm -hmm. put one ingredient, five ingredients, ten. doesn't matter. Whatever okay. your preference is. Do you love spicy food? Love it. Love it. I need it. Well, Koreans typically um, enjoy spicy food and hot food, meaning temperature hot. You know, the main dish, the stew or whatever you're eating, is usually piping hot, and I need to have it piping hot, otherwise it just... It comes in a, you know, I cast iron or a clay pot, really boiling the whole time you eat oh, it. Oh, bubbling, I like that. Bubbling, so it's really the love, the mm. love hot food. In the 1600s is when red pepper was introduced to Korea by way of the Americas, uh, Mexico. Kimchi existed, but without uh, the chili. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's funny how interconnected all our cultures and yeah, cuisines yeah, yeah. are. I thought, the, I thought really sauerkraut know. was from Alsace or from uh, Germany, but it's not. Where Actually, it the, the, from China. The pickled cabbage was done in China where they built the Great Wall of China. Isn't that they were feeding people. Isn't that crazy? And we always thought, you know, the noodle yeah. was Italy. It's China. China. Yeah. So China, they were feeding people China. rice with uh, pickled uh, cabbage. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, this is how I like it. Yeah, so you have also, a cold. You, know, you would eat like that. You wouldn't now put this in a pan. No. no. Ah. It's a cold salad. It looks spicy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. It's an after bite. After mm -hmm. There's that kick. There it is. Mm -hmm. Comes in That's a little later. It's good. Mm -hmm. You it's were right. Good. I should have just left it at one for Woo. you, but. You know. Mm -hmm. Was going to be my show, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It lingers, but it's spicy. But I like the spicy. Yeah. I love it. Another thing you need to know about Korean food is that they're very famous for barbecue. Koreans are right up there with the Aussie and us Yanks when it comes to barbecue. They have their own exacting and thoughtful way of cooking meat over fire. Marinades for paper-thin beef bulgogi are full of generous amounts of garlic and chili, rounded out with soy sauce, honey, and Asian pear. Thick, luscious slices of pork belly for samgyeopsal are simply cooked on grills set right in the table. Instead of burger buns, there are piles of lettuce and sesame leaves to wrap everything in. And instead of ketchup or mustard, there's a variety of Korean condiments, slices of raw garlic, samjang paste, and fresh scallion salad, just to name a few. However you wrap it, Korean barbecue is distinguished by simplicity and bold flavors. We love barbecue. Mm. So this is a traditional dish as well, and a not weak. Thinly sliced uh, ribeye, beautiful ribeye, mm. together. And we're going to do a marinade. So this particular dish he's going to make today is called bulgogi. 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 Yes. <laughs> yes. Good job, babe. <laughs> so for my marinade for the mm -hmm. bulgogi, I'm doing uh, ginger, garlic, onions. And we're actually using Asian pear, which is a tenderizer. Uh, soy sauce, sesame oil, sugar, some... Uh, Seven up. Right. What? Seven up. Yeah. Seven up. We're gonna blend this into a, a paste. Oh, I love a blender. And I love you can be creative with marinades. You can put different things in. Yeah, you can put in like, whatever you want. I've done four different versions. Oh, I know. I've never heard of such a thing. I put beer in there. Honey. Here we go. So we're gonna pour that uh, mm -hmm. marinade, yes, right on top Great. of the, uh, the beef. How long yeah. should it sit in a marinade? For a thin cut of meat like that, usually half an hour. Oh, I wouldn't okay. do it overnight because it just really. Oh really? It, 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 it it's, yeah. pickles the meat, I think. Yeah. Some onions. Great. So that's sesame so seeds. This is not a first date kind of dish. <laughs> <laughs> and some uh, shiitake, which are wet dry, hydrated. So sesame oil. Like a stir yeah, fry. It's very popular. 
cooking. And it cooks in no time. This is what yeah. they usually do in Korean restaurants. You do it yeah. at the table, don't you? It's like, and they do it themselves. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, me too. It's fun to get involved. And it's family eating. I like the family stuff. Me too. Like, everyone's in at the yeah. same time. Yeah. With the television on, right? <laughs> right. Are you going to do that flip again? <laughs> ah, you show oh, off. Come on. Such a show off. Hey, ah. I love that. Oh. Oh. See the little knee action? Do it, Yay. So cute. All right. You got to get the knees into it. Nice. Hey, almost. Nice. Yay. That was that good. It? That was good. <laughs> All right, I'm All right. <laughs> That was great. A little bit more. But it cooks in five minutes. So I love that. Mm. When you get the beef like that, you get it, you just get that at the butchers. Yeah. So no, just thinly, so it's thinly. 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 That looks there, great, babe. I think we're there. Yeah, we are. Oh, it looks delicious. Oh, that looks fantastic. What are you guys eating? That's great. You know, I have to take a little credit for Jean George's Korean skills. Yes. I introduced him to the food and the seasonings, and he's been playing around with them, so. Because really nice. you've always loved that Asian fusion. Yeah. Yes, do, for sure. It was mostly uh, Southeast Asia, which uh, yes. I traveled. Thailand and, yeah, yeah. and uh, Singapore, Hong Kong. So Korea is like something new for me. So now let me show you what a, what a som is. This is the proper way to eat this. Usually you get a variety of lettuces. This up. I like So that. you take a little bit oh, of rice. So many elements, it's wild, yeah. it's like. You know, beef, it makes sense because the beef is kind of quite rich, but then you eat it with the lettuce yes. and the herbs. Yeah, right. It's like the layering. Yeah, the layering is fantastic. Okay, so you just fold it and... It's not for a state food. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Tickly Try that. Again. So Koreans normally, they would shove the whole thing in your mouth. In one bite. In one, one bite. Really? Yeah, they would. Oh, I'm loving it. But we can be dainty. <laughs> it's really good, nice huh? with the lettuce leaf, too. Right? I'm really okay, good. You. <laughs> Don't fear yeah, right. No, this isn't hot, <laughs> I promise. It. It's not spicy. Here you go. Uh, Thank you. That's for you. That's really good. Babe, would you like me to I make you a I was kind of hoping you were going to shove that in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I could next go around. I'm going for it. Ah! All right, did it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the look we want. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's good, though. But mm. the, the texture is mm. not. I it's love a the nice dishes. combo. <laughs> Could you make it smaller for me? <laughs> no, no, you're gonna have to have Bye. puffy cheeks like all of us. You better give it to Jean George. Yes, I I'm gonna shove they... it in your mouth. I want to see how they do it in Korea. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay. Come on, okay. get ready, babe. Okay. It's hot though. Oh, that's so nice. Good. That's it's nice that you do it for other people. Mm -hmm. Put it in your mouth, right up the back. Yeah. Good. You know, when somebody feeds you, um, it's a sign of affection and. No, I think that's really lovely, you know, doing that to, for someone else. It's, it yeah, is a sign absolutely. of service yeah. and giving. Absolutely. Mm. And, um, I expect to be fed like that nightly. <laughs> so I'm going to show you another tradition in Korean culture, how you serve a drink to someone older than you. So youngest always pours for the oldest. Everything is done with two hands out of respect. So it'd be disrespectful if you just do one? Yes. And who pours for you? Okay. The old man. That's good. The oldest. You have to pour for me and I have to hold with two hands. How do you say thank you again? Kam sam nida. Kam sam nida. Good job, Kam sam nida. 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 A toast with our neighbors to Korean food. And get used to it because there'll be a whole lot more toasting, drinking and eating on Kimchi Chronicles. We'll get you off the tour bus and into restaurants and home kitchens to see authentic, real deal food that Koreans so love. But first, to briefly put it on the map for you, South Korea is a small peninsula sandwiched between superpowers China and Japan. While it's only the size of Kentucky, Korea has become the world's 13th largest economy and fifth biggest exporter. On Kimchi Chronicles, we'll take you on an eating odyssey that will blow your mind wow. <laughs> and occasionally your senses too. It is spicy though. Wow. And we'll go to a restaurant where they serve you raw marinated crabs that are bursting with roe. Roe that's remarkable when it gets mixed with spoonfuls of rice and stuffed back into the shell with a bit of the marinade too. Mm. Spicy. But good, but spicy. <laughs> My husband will wake you up early to go to one of the world's great fish markets, Noryangjin, a sprawling expanse of jumping and kicking seafood. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice breakfast, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll keep you up late to go to Norebang. That's Korean for karaoke. Always on time, and I gave you my all. 
We'll take you to the countryside to see the fields where rice is grown and harvested. We'll jet down to Jeju Island to see the greener than green rolling hills of tea gardens. Things always taste better when you go to the source. And John George will take a plunge with real life mermaids called Henyo. Who gather sea urchin and dive, fueled only by the air in their lungs. Okay, there you go. Ready? Yeah. And chew it. <laughs> we'll take you where the taxi drivers go for breakfast after their late shifts to enjoy pork neck soup made hearty with potatoes. Incidentally, it's considered a great hangover remedy. Really Cringe always shares. I know. That's how we share our love. And we'll go into elementary schools to see what Korean kids eat for lunch. Kimchi and squid salad with red pepper aren't exactly chicken fingers and french fries. The Korean affection for spice starts early. We'll go to the beaches of Busan, fifth largest port in the world. And with my girlfriend, Heather Graham, we'll nibble on little Korean delicacies at 180 miles an hour on KTX, a high-speed train. We'll eat street food everywhere we go. Each stand and stall, an excuse to stop and eat something particular to the place. What a technique, huh? I like the technique. Like the crunchiest fried shrimp at the beach in Sokcho, a candy called Dragon's Beard in Seoul, or silkworm larva. <laughs> we'll eat barbecue everywhere, wrapping bites of pork and beef in sesame and red-tipped lettuce leaves, rolling them into neat packages called sam. Mm. I've been trying all over Korea to get these secret recipes. Oh. No matter how nice I am, nobody's giving it up. We'll see how they make kochujang, red pepper paste. <laughs> then we will eat it with and on everything. We'll see the artistry and workmanship that goes into making hangari, the beautiful big ceramic pots that hold everything from kochujang to soy sauce. We'll be with Buddha on his birthday. How old is Buddha today? I believe he's 2,554. Oh, he doesn't look a day over 2,000. And tour the palaces of Korean kings. Could move in, huh? I'm ready. <laughs> this is stunning. This is, yeah, this is where you'd want to. Do they have palace stays just here? Just stay. <laughs> <laughs> we should. We'll eat court cuisine and dress like royalty. Where are my queenly jewels? <laughs> <laughs> we'll browse markets where they sell dried frogs to heal wounds. This is especially good for hangovers. I definitely need that. We'll dance with the famous masked dancers of Andong. And Heather and I will get our kicks with the Taekwondo master. Kind of gets your blood racing, right? You're just like, yeah. Of course we'll cook with our Aussie neighbors, where you'll see that Wolverine can be a bit of a wuss when it comes to spice. Hey, you. I didn't know you were such a lightweight. Yeah, I am a lightweight. We'll politely slurp noodles as loud as we can, because in Korea it's not just allowed, it's actually encouraged and is a compliment to the cook. We'll show you the great veneration Korean society has for its elders, a quality I wish we had more of back at home. We'll ride horses and drive go-karts with my Chloe, who can vouch that Korea is a fun place to visit if you're a kid or if you just act like one. And have a memorable picnic on the beach with my aunt and grandmother over fresh spicy crab soup and grilled squid. As always with our family, we'll break into song together. One final note. My life has come full circle. Sometimes I just can't believe that me, little old me from Ujangbu, Korea, is now getting to show you the country of my birth. Having an opportunity to return to Korea to spend time with my Korean family, to cook, to eat with them, to do nothing but simply be together, has been a moving and meaningful journey of rediscovery. It's been beyond rewarding to learn more and more about where and who I come from. And I can't wait to share it all with you.